You wanted to see me, Dr. DeRossi? Yes, good morning, Nurse Monahan. Please, have a seat. As I'm sure you're aware, the code involving Mrs. Grant caught my attention. I need to hear what happened before issuing any best practice recommendations to the hospital board. Yes, ma'am. I'm just confused as to why this is going to the board. Isn't my patient report and the charts enough? She's doing great in recovery, and I wouldn't want to make a big deal about a code. I understand. Look, I believe this whole incident can give us a black eye. We might have just dodged a major lawsuit. Careers might even be over, and I need to know exactly what happened. Why am I here instead of Dr. Kaplan or the residents? They were in charge on the floor. Well, there were some inconsistencies with the timeline, and I need you to give it to me straight. Understood? All right. So, last Saturday, the 15th to be exact, at 07.15 hours, there was a code for Mrs. Grant. Her head trauma from the car accident required her to have an on-site crike, but it wasn't sufficient. So, my nurses and I assisted Paige, the uh, on-site resident, with a uh, tracheostomy for longer ventilation support. We held her under close observation. Uh, Paige told us to notify her if there were any changes. And were there? Yes. At uh, 15, 20 hours, I noticed a change in Mrs. Grant's breathing. Her oxygen levels were getting low. I also discovered that there was a leak in the ventilator's endotracheal tube, which failed to provide the right volume of air. Did you notify Paige? Yes. Got her on the phone immediately. She was at home at the moment. Really? Did she say why? <sighs> Look, Andy, I need to know the full extent of any mistakes here, and I don't want to throw the wrong person under the bus, especially a nurse with your record. Okay. She basically let it be known that she was on call for 22 hours straight, and she was too tired to instruct us in person. So then? She told us to boost the volume of the air on the machine even higher than the vent was set until she could follow up the next day in person. However, we saw right away that the, the, the machine's automatic settings weren't stabilizing her. It was a totally insane call. Take your time. I challenged her. I said it was clear that Mrs. Grant's vitals were beginning to crash. I said I was canceling the machine's settings. She hung up on me. She then called Dr. Kaplan, the resident supervisor, who instructed us to follow Paige's orders. I refused. I said I would not go further until he or Paige came in personally to monitor the situation. And did they? Dr. Kaplan came in about 30 minutes later. He did surgery after I suggested he look at Mrs. Grant's CT printout. I found a slight discoloration, a pulmonary blab. If she received any more oxygen, it would have killed her. Paige missed it. Incredible. Aside from the code and surgeries, none of the finer details here made it in the initial report, as I'm sure you're aware. Frankly, Andy, just between us, I trust you and the nursing staff more than the resident supervisors at this point. They've been cutting corners and it's been showing in more than a few of my most recent reports, and I... Am I going to get in trouble for not coming clean about this? No, Andy. You've done a stellar job. I need a brazen veteran in the ICU, someone who's not afraid to push back on a bad call. I want you to personally notify me of any further issues with the residency. We'll get this sorted out. And I believe there are going to be some major staffing changes soon. You can go for now. Thank you, Dr. DeRossi.